Are you ready for part two? Did you practice part one? Did ya? Did you practice that EQ and make sure it was all sounding pretty sweet? Well, then you're probably ready for part two. Hey, what's up guys? It's Fabio here from Noise. How you doing? Great to see you all. And we're continuing with the mini series on mastering your demo in Logic. I'm also doing the same for Ableton. So if you are an Ableton user, go check those videos out. This is part two. We're gonna be talking about compression and saturation. Two things that I feel Logic is not amazing at when it comes to the mastering process. Regardless, it does have some options which do work. And remember, this isn't professional mastering. This is just getting your tracks up to scratch before sending for feedback or testing them in your car, a club, DJing them at a house party and so on. Before we crack on, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, check out the cheesy animation that we got made and make sure you hit that bell. So when the third part of this series comes out, you'll get a notification reminding you to watch it. Thought I'd take this angle. I haven't done this in a while. It's been, it's been a long time since we saw the studio from this camera angle. In fact, the last time I did it was when I first moved in here and kind of nice. You know, it's a bit messy, but it's real. It's lived in. This isn't a YouTube studio. This is a working production, recording and mixing space. So take note of the stickies. There's definitely less of them now than there were before. All right, let's jump in. You ready? So let's start by saying thank you very much to one of my assistants called Lewis Finch, who sent me this track. He mixed and recorded it himself. Very talented guy, clearly. And we're mastering it today together. Compression and saturation. This took me a little while to work out in Logic just using stock plugins, but I got there in the end and I'm gonna share it with you right now. Let's start with the compressor. Let's go down to Dynamics and select the compressor. We're gonna go for the Vintage VCA, which of course is based on the SSL G-Bus compressor, very famous compressor, although to be honest, it kind of sounds and acts nothing like it, but because we're using a stock compressor, it's the closest we're gonna get. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is set the attack to 38 milliseconds, which is a nice slow attack. And this auto button doesn't actually work, so I'm gonna ignore it and I'm gonna put this at 1,200 milliseconds, which is where I like to start. I like a really, really slow release when it comes to master bus compression because otherwise it can sound too pumpy, but we can always adjust this and you should too because these are track dependent settings. Now that I have my starting attack and release points, what I'm gonna do is go to my threshold and start pulling this down so we get an adequate amount of compression. Remember, overdo it first and then pull back so you can hear exactly what's going on. I can't find home in these streets They say I'm in my bag But my bag's LV And I don't really mind With the tags on G But I'm still feeling lost Not sure who I wanna be Stunts I can't find home in these streets They say I'm in my bag But my bag's LV Okay, we've got a bit of compression going on. We've got quite a slow release. The reason I chose 1200 milliseconds, which is 1.2 seconds, is because this is actually a setting that's on the original SSL G bus. The next value I would look at for this is 600 milliseconds and then 400 milliseconds. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I want to be. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I want to be. I really recommend typing in the values because it means that they switch really quickly between one another. I found that 400 actually sounds pretty good. 600 is a bit better and adds a bit more sustain and 1,200 milliseconds is way too slow. So let's go between 400 and 600 milliseconds. I can't find home in these streets They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV And I don't really mind with the tags on G But I'm still feeling lost, not sure who I wanna be Stunts I can't find home in these streets They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV And I don't really mind with the tags on G But I'm still feeling lost, not sure who I wanna be I'm kind of feeling 400 milliseconds a little bit more. It just adds more character and more movement to the track, which I really like. So let's go with that. 
Okay, next up, we're gonna adjust the makeup gain. Let's see if this compressor has reduced or added any volume. Because it's passing through this fake SSL circuit, it might be that it's adding some harmonics along the way, something we wanna check out. It might also be that because of the gain reduction, we've actually reduced the volume a little bit, but we do have a really slow attack. So the only way to tell is to turn the compressor on and off and use our ears. Definitely lost about a decibel of volume. I'm gonna add that now. Don't look at the meter and go, oh, it's gain reducing by about two decibels, therefore you should add two decibels. Always rely on your ears. Let's take a listen again with the makeup gain on and off. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I want to be. Stunts. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I want to be. Okay, that sounds pretty level match, and you can hear the SSLG bus giving that slight pop sheen to the record. I know these changes are really subtle, and if you're struggling to listen to them, make sure you're using studio headphones or monitors. If you can't hear the changes in the actual compressor circuitry, don't worry about that, because these are tiny, tiny little subtle differences that actually take a long time to take notice of. But making you aware of them means that you might start to pick up on it. If you find that the compressor is too obvious and reacting too much to the low frequencies, unfortunately, there isn't a high pass filter. But what you can do is use this dry, wet mix Dial. This basically just allows us to blend the signal of the compressor of what's going on here so we can have the best of both worlds, what we had originally and what we have now. Let's try it out. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I want to be. Stunts. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I want to be. So as you kind of like it with the wet down ever so slightly, around 60%, I think that sounds pretty good. Subtle, subtle, small changes, designed to train your ears, designed to help you get a little bit better at those small things that really matter. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at saturation. Now Logic doesn't have a tape saturator, which is something that I would normally use at this stage, but it does have an overlooked effect, which has kind of been tucked away. They bought it from Camel Audio, redid the user interface, and I rarely ever, ever see people using it. So let me load it up. It's called Fat Effects, and it can be found in multi-effects, Fat effects, almost forgot that. Once you open it, what you wanna do is turn everything off. So we're gonna turn this off, this off, this off, this off, and come down to the bottom right hand corner where it says master. Turn the limiter off, keep the mix at 100%, and we'll turn the output up a little bit. But because we're gonna add distortion, it might increase the volume ever so slightly and the amplitude of the signal, so best to keep it down for now. Now let's head over to this distortion area in the fat effects and we're going to pull everything down again and we're going to set it up so we've got soft saturation first tube second and diode third what's awesome about this plugin is that you can blend different distortions together to your own taste and see what works for you these are the three that i liked the most at the mastering stage the other ones felt a little bit heavy but play around and see what works for you. Every track is different and every track needs a different type of saturation. So having said that, even though in this track I might use these three in another track, I might edit them ever so slightly. Now what we're gonna do is start by increasing the soft saturation until we get a tonal change. We'll pay attention to the output as well, bringing it down if we have to. And then after we hear that tonal change, we'll pull back ever so slightly. I can't find home in these streets They say I'm in my bag But my bag's LV And I don't really mind With the tags on G But I'm still feeling lost Not sure who I wanna be Stunts I can't find home in these streets They say I'm in my 
bag, but my bags are all beaten. I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. Stars, I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bags are all beaten. I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. Stars, I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bags are all beaten. I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. Love that soft saturation. It is really soft and barely noticeable, but it's just bringing up some of those upper mids and making them feel a bit more present. Okay, let's do the same with tube and diode. Watch out with tube and diode because they are quite heavy handed. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. You can see there that even at four and five percent, it already adds so much distortion. I wish that it was a little subtler than that, even at such a low percentage, but it ain't. So we're gonna roll with it. Okay, let's turn everything on and off and see where we're at so far. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. I think we can agree that when we turn it on, everything sounds way too distorted. So we're gonna go to the master mix and we're gonna turn it all the way down and then increase to taste. So we get a dry, wet, saturated sound. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. Fat FX is adding more harmonics and making the track feel denser and fuller. As it makes it denser, it should increase the RMS and cut out some of the peaks. Let's have a look at a level meter and turn it on before and after just to see what effect it's having on the peak level. So let's go down to metering, level meter. I like to have the level meter vertical and always at the biggest size. Okay, let's start with it off. Let's check what the peak level is for the first couple of bars. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. Okay, that hits a maximum peak of 5.9 and 5.7 on the left and right channel. Let's try with it on. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. I don't really mind with the 6.9 and 6.7. So it says that it's a decibel quieter on the peak level, but it sounds a decibel louder with the saturation on. So let's try that again, on and off, listen to the change in perceived volume, but take a look at the peak volume. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost. Not sure who I wanna be. So there you have it, a little trick to get things louder. Just a little one, just a little one. Not gonna reveal all the secrets at once, but if you're struggling to get that loudness, this could be a great way of reaching your desired LUFS. Although, although, hold tight. One second. Guys, you don't have to worry about LUFS and RMS and peak level and all this stuff too much. You are just mastering a demo. And if you are a professional mastering engineer and you're learning to do these things, then sure, this stuff applies to you. It's important that you understand, but don't obsess over it. 
And if anything, loudness comes from the mix, not the master. The master can definitely help it become louder, but the density of a track, the peak control on individual elements is all done channel by channel. The root of the sound is always more important than trying to control it at the end. So as useful as these techniques are, don't obsess over them. Just remember that at the end of the day, the song is the most important thing. If the song is great, if the song is great, the mixing, the mastering and all of that will fall into your lap. Okay, let's turn the compressor and the fat effects on and off to see how we've benefited this track so far. I'll play a slightly longer section of the track so you don't get bored listening to this loop. Couldn't go back to where we started until I got back secure. Could have been broke or broken heart and now I'm a champion. Praying I thank the Lord. Life is a blessing, I'm drowning so Stop at the mountain I'm standing on. Practically perfect, I'm paragon. Now I'm so far out in the source that I need that life ring. On top of the cake, man, I bring that icing. History that I'm writing, Listerine with the whitening, glistening like a diamond. When in bone, wrap it in chrome, man, I just drip no license. I can't find home in these streets. They say I'm in my bag, but my bag's LV. And I don't really mind with the tags on G, but I'm still feeling lost, not sure who I wanna be. So, compression, saturation, make it subtle, be easy with it, follow these steps, and then decide for yourself what you need for your track. Because there's not one way, there never is. But before you go, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. <gasps> Cheesy animation over here to the right hand side. And I'm gonna be back very soon with the final video of this mini series for mastering your demo in Logic on Limiting. I'll see you very soon. It's a big love from Noise. Peace. You ready? You ready? Big thanks again to Lewis Finch, my assistant, who recorded and mixed this track and let me use it for the video. So thanks, dude. So thanks, bro. So thanks, bro. So you rock. Uh, uh, uh.